This presentation is about the Human Development Index, or HDI, which is a way of measuring the welfare of people. Let's look at what we've been talking about in recent presentations. We've been using and describing words like welfare, quality of life, standard of living. This really, these words really mean how happy we feel in our lives, how enjoyable our lives are, and how satisfying they are. So if this is what we're trying to measure, GDP seems, at first sight anyway, to be a relatively inadequate measure of welfare because it's concentrating on output. Now we've seen in a previous presentation that output or income does have a connection with welfare, but we've also seen that GDP has many weaknesses as a measure of welfare. So many economists have over the years tried to come up with something better than GDP as a measure of our welfare. And they've broken down the word welfare into the three things that they believe constitute welfare or make up welfare. Firstly, welfare or happiness has definitely something to do with consumption because consumption of goods gives us utility or pleasure or happiness. But it also has something to do with how long we live because obviously the longer we live, the more we can enjoy the pleasure from consumption. And as human beings, we have a desire to reach our potential in life, to feel that we have achieved what we are capable of achieving. And so this should also be included in any measure of welfare. So with this in mind, uh, economists have come up with a measure called the Human Development Index, or HDI, which includes GDP per capita, that's the consumption element, if you like. But it also includes measures of health care and education. So it's what we call a composite measure. It combines more than one number or measurement, and it tries to come up with an overall picture of welfare in an economy. So what are the health care measures that are used in calculating a country's HDI? Well, they include things like infant mortality rates, that is to say the number of children below the age of one who die per 1,000 births. So if 100 children died before reaching the age of one year old, one years old, per 1,000 births, that would be an infant mortality rate of 10%. Another measure of health care used in the HDI is number of doctors per thousand of the population, as well as life expectancy. So these are some of the health care measures used. In terms of education, the HDI includes literacy rates, that is, the av uh, that is the percentage of the population who are able to read and write. Also, the average number of years of school education that is common in the economy. These are some of the educational measures included in the HDI. And the output measures are GDP is GDP per capita. So we have a combination of output measures, healthcare measures, and education measures. So taking these three measurements, the, G, the HDI comes up with a combination, an index number, which is a combination of GDP per capita, health care measures, and education measures. And this index number is somewhere between 0 and 1 for every economy. For example, Norway is currently first in the HDI league, and it has an HDI measure of approximately 0 0.97. So very close to the highest it can be. When we try to compare countries as they appear in GDP rankings, that is to say highest GDP to lowest, and HDI rankings, that is highest HDI score to lowest, we do see a very strong correlation or connection between countries in each uh, measured uh, in each way. So countries that are very high up in the uh, GDP rankings 
tend to be also quite high up in the HDI rankings, which tells us that they're not measuring things which are so completely different. And it also tells us that GDP, despite all its faults, is not such a bad measure of welfare. However, there are one or two exceptions to this rule, and China is a notable example because China is second in the ranking of GDP countries. It's the second, it has the second highest GDP in the world, but it's not even in the top 50 when uh, its HDI is calculated. So we could argue that China is an economy that produces a lot of output, but where the welfare of its population is relatively low compared to other countries. So this shows again that there can be differences in measurement between a GDP and HDI um, in, in, in countries, within countries, and that in some cases um, HDI is probably a better measure of welfare than the GDP. So in conclusion, HDI is probably in some cases, particularly in some countries, a better measure of welfare. And logically, because it includes more than just GDP, it seems to give us a better picture of the welfare of the population anyway. But GDP has been around longer, and it's still more popular as a measure of welfare, as a measure of happiness in the economy, as a measure of fulfillment of the people than HDI. And despite its weaknesses, it's still used very much as a measure of welfare. And it is used to compare the welfare of different people in different countries. Whether that's right or wrong, and whether HDI will take over in the near future as a common measure of welfare remains to be seen. But that's the situation as it stands at the moment.